What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to be showing you how to wrap the hood on my Jeep Gladiator. It's a little high, it's gonna have its challenges, but we're wrapping this in Vivid Color Fusion, which is a cosmetic paint protection film. If you guys are looking for more in-depth videos, don't forget to check out my website, ckwraps.com. The link's in the top corner and the description below, as well as if you're looking for training, especially in this new film, where I'm offering a dual certification. This means two brands, Vivid and Flexi Shield. Two brands are, we're doing a cosmetic paint protection film offered at $1,000 for the first 64 people. That will be on, that is already on my other website, vinylwraptraining.com. The link is also in the description below. Take advantage of that while you can because the price will probably double uh, once it all fills. So we're gonna be wrapping the hood in this film right here, which is called, this color is called uh, Stealth Gunmetal Gray. It looks exactly like that. Installs really easily. This is TPU. This is real paint protection film. This is, installs dry. We don't have to wait for edges, corners, or anything. We just wrap around, we cut, we heat a little bit, done. The film, extremely pliable. It's, it's incredible how pliable this film is. It has air release. It is not pressure sensitive, but only really two brands in the market are a pressure sensitive film. This is TPU. This is paint protection film. So it's meant to protect your car. We just get now get colors in it. Pretty cool, right? So basically almost everything that's on the market right now is an inferior product to this. So why would you use anything else other than color options right now? Because this has just come out. There aren't very many color options. Um, I believe there's 12 for Vivid right now and Flexi Shield does have a bunch. Vivid is planning to have about 50 or so, so that's pretty decent, maybe more, who knows? We'll see how, how it goes. But this is the revolution, this is the way things are going, this is the future of bono wrapping, and it makes literally no sense to buy a cast film of you know other reputable brands that you've heard of for the same price that something like this costs, right? Because you get scratch protection or self-healing, incredible self-healing actually. I, this, is, this finish actually has such good self-healing, I couldn't even scratch it with a brass brush. And even if it does get scratched, it heats out. Stain resistant, you have UV protection, you have stone repellency, see, re repellency, that's even a word. All these things make this great. What I've also done, I'll point out here, is I've put inlays where the hinges are. This is, I mean, is it necessary? No, I've done it with the hinges open. I've wrapped the hood with the hinges open, and it's a huge pain because the hood is sliding all around. Generally, you want to lift these hinges up and be able to wrap underneath them because it's first of all it's not painted under there um second of all it just gets them out of the way the reason why i've put inlays in there is because i can bolt the hinges back down and i can keep the hood stable and stationary so that's uh if you want to do a kind of thing or not want to do a kind of thing totally up to you let's roll this out this hood is not magnetic it's fully aluminum there's nowhere to actually use magnets on the front end other than the actual frame. Cut this piece at 74 inches, which should give me about four inches per side, which is, there's the edge of the hood, which is roughly somewhere in that line there. We don't need this, it's just going to get in our way. So I'm gonna come in from the outside here on the left side and come in like this. This piece will come in handy, trust me. There we go. Now we're rocking. Just getting that started. Keep it flat, keep it going. But I'm gonna flat it out from here. So we're gonna pull this up and give it a quick lift and get it flatter. And you can see how beautiful this stretch is. Like, just check this out. Like I'm just wrapping over compound curves like nobody's business right now. It's nuts. There we go, release that. Boom. Bam. Okay, we're gonna hit that middle up with the squeegee right now before it gets too settled. Anything near an edge, I'm not so worried about. I may have to lift again, that's okay. We can lift again. It's simple to lift the film up because 
it's nice and pliable and we can put it just back to where we were. So I can see a big bubble building up right there. We're gonna lift this one up and just a little bit higher, there we go. Place that back down again and then continue to work the air upwards. If we get any bubbles like that, I'll just push down on them. But if we get a lot, then I'm gonna to have to lift again just to make things simpler. Is that my HUD making that sound? Yes, so. Yeah, make sure we don't leave any air behind. And as I work myself or work towards the hinge, it's gonna be a little bit easier. It should be. Got one bubble there. There we go. It should be a little bit easier because this hinge is actually bridging a gap, so it's causing a bubble a natural bubble in the film or a natural elevation in the film. And there we go. We're gonna work the film right up to the very edge here. And then we can sort of just let it, let it chill. Okay, in here, this is a pocket. We're not gonna deal with the sides just yet. We're gonna finish squeezing out the middle. Like this side's been sitting obviously for even longer, much longer than the other side. And you can see that the adhesive begins to settle and so it begins to trap air. So you can see how you're going to have to lift this side and reposition it. Let's do that. We'll just stand on the ground actually. Probably right there, there we go. Quick lifts and then get right up in there. Again, you can see that if you don't let it sit for too long, it does squeegee down pretty nicely. Just time is everything. Using a tack reducer would be totally fine, especially on this flat area here. It's gonna help the air just come out way easier. I, again, I wanted to try it without it just to see how hard it would be. It's really not that hard. You can use a little solution on the surface if you'd like to, like a little slip solution or something, something to create a little bit of glide, like a lubricant for wraps, not for uh, oil changes or greasy hinges. Put that up right there, reset that. Beautiful. One more time here, bubble right there. Nice. Okay, come in right around here. I'm always overlapping those passes, making sure that I'm not leaving any air behind. If you leave an air bubble in the middle for a long period of time, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. I'm gonna move on to the front section over here. So we can go right here, pop this up. And we wanna flatten out some of these wrinkles again. Let's just work our way towards this side. There we go. You can see I'm just letting it stick to my fingers. I'm not even doing anything fancy here. I'm gonna work this massive air bubble right here down towards the front. Keep the film elevated if you want to. This is gonna help tremendously when it comes to squeezing air out. Okay. I'm always trying to work the larger pockets of air towards a section that makes sense, like where the air can escape very easily. And then over here, generally, when I wrap this in chrome, I need, I definitely need heat, but here we go. I'm not even gonna use any heat, check this out. I should have left the hinge off on this side here, it's just in my way, but look at that, it's beautiful. I pulled right out to this corner here and it's just naturally wrapping around the front edge. So get in here, especially where it's touching the paint and start squeegeeing out that air. Right, we're gonna open up this end over here. This is gonna allow the air to escape more easily. You should put a glove on for this. I'm doing this with bare hands. You should put a glove on because it would just glide better. Just being lazy. And it's a, it's not a gloss film, it's a matte film. So it's a little bit easier in that sense. Now I can see here, we're still, it looks like we're trapping air, maybe we're not. This bubble looks like it's getting bigger, but I can see that there's a connection, an outlet here. I can actually use my squeegee at this point. Use my hand because it just fits better in the contour. Um, you could use a soft squeegee, softer squeegee than I'm using. I'm using a medium stiffness squeegee. Not a single blue line, nothing in this. It's beautiful. 
squeezing left-handed. This is not normal for me. Gotta get used to doing both though. I'm starting higher up with my passes. This is just extra material. It looks like tension, but it's not. That's actually tension there. I have to fix that now. It's a common area for tension on this hood. So that's where the compound curve is. So see wrinkles, we pull them the opposite direction. And even if I let go, it just kind of just almost goes away. Okay, we're gonna profile or outline this better in a bit, but right now I don't, I'm not gonna do that. I'll do that afterwards. Right now I'm gonna focus on alleviating this tension here. So I need to bring the film this way. And again, this hinge, I should've just left it off, it is in the way right now. I made this mistake last time I wrapped it too, actually. So we have to kind of bring it across. You see what I'm doing here? Okay, that's gonna tighten that up a lot better. Just going over everything. Cool, so now when I pull the film the opposite direction of the wrinkles, they more or less just all go away. There's a little bit there, but okay, no heat gun, nothing yet. Got a crease there, that's okay. If you're ever concerned about having too much tension at your edge, all you do is just wrap a little bit more around the other side if you need to. Make the cut clean, straight, and you're fine. You see how this all just conforms right in there? It's just so beautiful. I can't even imagine it being any easier than this unless it was just pressure sensitive, which you can just make your own pressure sensitive film using tack reducer. Okay, let's push that back down. I could elevate the hood on like a box or something that would help get it away from that hinge, but I thought about it, but I just didn't want to interrupt the video. So again, we're pulling, hands over top. Pulling, 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 pulling. Right down to this corner right here. Okay, so these wrinkles, they look like they're leading towards an edge. They're actually not. If I just pull them that way, they're gonna go away. See, I don't even, even have to do anything. I just let go of the film. It's all about reading these and watching what's happening. Don't want to talk too much before I squeeze you at the flat section where the air is going to get trapped. And right over the top there. So just by cutting that extra film away, it made it easier for me. Again, it would have been easier if I had left that hinge out of the way. left it uninstalled. Just gonna pull that one wrinkle out, there we go. It's funny, I was actually kind of concerned about doing this hood, because the film it has its challenges. It will, it will pull back on you really hard, because this is TPU, this is not cast or PVC. So if you're not careful, you have tension at your edges, it's definitely pulling back. Okay, let's go right up here. A little bit out to this corner here, hands over top. Let's do that right there. Pull out this one wrinkle. Probably don't even have to pull it out, probably just squeeze you in. There we go. These ones, pull them back the other way. There we go. Let the film relax. Nice. Okay, we're gonna open up this end. I'll put my glove on for this, just for the sake of it, because it's easier, it's faster, it's safer. I don't wanna mess things up at this point. We're gonna work. Out towards the escape at the very top. 
So at least that's coming out. So when she's here with a glove on. At least that's basically the hood wrapped. That's the hard part. Now we just gotta cut. Roll around the edges, cut, and then heat, and we're done. So we're just gonna do this little section here. Just flatten those ones out first. See, so they don't come back. Go right into the deep part of the recess. I am gonna post heat that, just I don't want it to fail. I mean, but you can see, again, how easily the film conforms into there. Okay, next up, before we lift the hood up or do anything else, we cut your circle or your shape, oval, whatever shape this is, as nicely as you can. But if I have too much overlap, that's okay. We can always trim that off later. Let's come around here. Cool, get rid of this. You can just heat afterwards as a post heat. Otherwise simple, okay? Let's roll the right. You always try to start at the top of the letters and work the air down. When they're so low and close to the edge of the hood like this, you can just kind of go across, but if the air gets trapped, you just, again, lift it. Did it happen on the A this time? Nope. So we're good there on the A. And sometimes when you add too much heat, what happens is it starts to trap air as well. It aids in trapping air. So you don't want to put too much heat. I'm just putting a little bit to make it warm and give me that extra definitive edge. This hood, when I lift it, obviously goes really high up. So I have a box. I'm gonna lift it and put it on the box to make sure it's not so high where we can't even reach it. Nice, came off really easily. Put that right there. So now our edges are all, all elevated, which makes it really easy to wrap them and do our cutting. So let's push that around the corner there and then I want to make sure that we're not sticking to the fender. So let's push the film underneath to give it that extra slack right there. And now let's heat it. Roll that around. So the corner is basically done. I'm gonna double check it. Easy, there's not much many corners on this hood. So pretty easy. You can see there, it looks really, really clean. It's an easy way to test. Just take your squeegee, put it behind, and you can see there are no wrinkles, right? It's a very easy way to test. Let's go through the rest. Just fanning with a little bit of heat at first, a little hotter the second pass, and a little hotter the third pass. Right here, we have to do a little bit of pulling, so a little, I'm gonna let it stick to my glove, it kind of does, and just roll that around without pulling too hard. I don't wanna overstretch the film. Just, just finessing. Give that some heat, that some heat. Let's do a little bit right here at this point. Just like that, a little massage. Some more heat. Come around this corner. Again, you can see that corner looks beautiful as well. Let's come across the front ends. What do you think we're gonna do on this side? Exactly the same thing. Oh, see, I touched it with a hot heat gun. Didn't even do anything. <laughs> that was because I was standing on the cord. Didn't even do anything, that's crazy. This thing's at, it's rated at a thousand degrees. I don't know if it is a thousand degrees, but I have it on the hottest setting. Roll that around there, that corner. It's nuts. Couple of tiny wrinkles right there, so I'm just gonna bring that back. Massage those out. There we go. It's 
So many passes I'm doing per edge, at least three or four. This is called being thorough. Don't be that shop that doesn't take the extra two minutes. Like this literally takes like two minutes to do this. Don't be the shop that does that. Or the guy that does that or whatever. This doesn't do the extra heating afterwards. I'm gonna come around the back side of the corner. Let the blade do the work. I'm just guiding it. There we go. Keep my blade on the underside edge, just like that. Tension at the same time. It's just corrosion you know, happening at the edges here. Maybe I should wrap around further to prevent corrosion. Float with it, you know? Just don't force anything. Remember, once we cut, we have to heat afterwards. It'll help even clean up the edges further. But yeah, don't force anything. Just float, glide with the edge. This hood is at my eye level right now. And this Jeep is really high up. So if I can't see any red at eye level, when the hood goes down, there's not gonna be any red shown. But even when I look under here, I still can't see any red. I can see red, but obviously the hood, like under the actual hood. I'm just not gonna see red on the edges. You can wrap around more than this if you want to. It's just not my style. When you're confident about your work and your installation. You don't have to wrap around very far. This keeps the edge looking clean. Not that I'm showing off the engine because there's nothing in there, just a, the same engine in my minivan. But for those of you who do have nice, nicer cars with cooler engines, I want to keep it clean. This tight, come around the corner this way. See, I kind of meet the corner in the middle. Helps keep the film tight. Keeps the corner looking nice. The last little bit to cut off here. And see how I'm doing a pressing motion? I'm doing this pressing motion because I don't want my finger to drag on the edge. You can, you can slide as long as you don't heat too much, but if you heat too much and you slide, even with a glove on, it's gonna drag and then you're gonna end up with creases or wrinkles. You probably won't see them be underneath, but Still not nice. So sometimes when I see that there's extra material hanging off just a little bit, I press instead of sliding. But it's all about being observant and, and watching what's happening. Get a nice post seat on there. Good. A little warm first, work that around. A little hotter this time. Again, the film's not gonna shrink, so. So uh, unless it's only gonna shrink if you added too much tension to it. Because obviously it'll want to retract. Like I said, it will pull back really hard on you. Nice pressure here, nice amount of heat here. Okay, warm here again. Back and forth a couple times, at least two passes. Again, I always do overkill, I wanna be thorough. If you're overkill, there's no reason why your wrap should ever fail. It so it's a little bit closer and you can see all the paints wearing away this is oem paint i call this my invisible edge because it, it just transitions off so nicely that it looks like i just literally put a cap on top of every panel all right guys that's it the hood is wrapped only thing i didn't do was cut out the little holes for the washer jet nozzles on the top and the little bumper things that go on there and then for the brackets that go back on there but other than that, that's it. 
This actually went down way easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, nothing was cut out. It's all in there for you guys to see and learn about and see how it installs. I thought it was gonna be more problematic in the middle, but because the film is not high tack, it's a nice low medium tack, it went down really nicely. I showed you how you can just lift the film back up, put it back down. If you wanted to make things simpler, you could throw down some tack reducer in the center area. That will make things simpler because it'll just allow it to be more pressure sensitive at that point, but didn't really need it. And just showing you that you don't really need it. Edges, corners, all the way around, heating, cutting, trimming, post heating, all that stuff was in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to doing more videos for you. Thank you for watching as always. I appreciate it. Take care.